Hi everybody, Professor Benson here. Um, this is my quick start for beginners, um, getting set up in Clo, just learning the most basic foundation tools um, to get up and running. Um, this is based off my experience of teaching now for over four years, so many different personalities and students. And I've learned that as long as you know this checklist of things to memorize, you'll be good. Um, you still need to watch all of the Clo Foundation videos. They are great, they're amazing, please take notes. But this checklist I'm gonna go over are the things that you wanna memorize today before you even start anything else. And having these tricks memorized um, is really gonna help you just learn all the more complicated stuff a little bit easier. So the first thing, number one, make sure you have a mouse. Please, I've seen too many students make the mistake of not doing it and using the trackpad on their laptop instead, but you need a mouse with a scroll wheel. Um, it's nice if your scroll wheel can be a clicker as well. This will really, really help. Um, once you have this mouse, then you can practice zooming in the 3D window as well as the 2D window. You're definitely gonna wanna zoom a lot, okay? Now, I'm zooming in into like her crotch. What if I wanna zoom in to like her shoulders? The next thing you need to learn is how to pan. So on my mouse, I can click and drag and it lets me move around um, on my screen. Now I'm zooming again, zooming out and panning. So please practice, make sure you can zoom, you can pan and you will be good. Um, sometimes you zoom too much and you just need a restart. You need to memorize this keyboard shortcut, the number two, and it resets your view. Also good to know the other numbers as well will rotate around um, different ways and you'll learn more about that in the foundation videos. But for now, memorize the number two, it's very handy. Next, you'll want to do is rotate around the avatar. The way I have my mouse set up, I just right click and I can rotate around her as well. So please practice those things, really help you with everything else that's going on as well. Okay, so the next thing I have is, um, a lot of students, you're gonna take a lot of screenshots in this class and you're gonna post them on the discussion board and students will notice that some people can take really nice screenshots and they're like, what the heck? So the secret is up at the top menu, there is a render button. Um, now the first render, this is gonna pull up a whole window. We actually have a whole lesson plan about how to render a high quality image, but don't worry about that today. Instead, the secret that I think a lot of students are, have found is just do quality render 3D window and um, it'll kind of like put the lights on. You'll see some shadows and shading and it's kind of just like a real quick way to get sort of like a nicer render without having to do all the work of the actual render window that we will cover later in class. So that's kind of a quick way. And then you can go file, snapshot, and this will just take JPEGs of your, your work or your, you, know, you can just do a screenshot as well. Now with that said, I will be asking for JPEGs of your work, but you are gonna want to save the whole project. I've had students not do that. They'll just save the screenshot and then they'll wanna go back in and change something but when you only have the screenshot or a JPEG file, you can't change anything. So you need to do this on your own because I'm not gonna be able to control this and you know make sure you do it. You have to go file, save, project. So every time you're done, make sure you save the project. And when you do that, it's gonna save the avatar, it's gonna save all of your 2D flat pattern pieces, it's gonna save all the sewing, everything. So always make sure save project. Sometimes I will ask you to attach this, the, the project file, which is the file extensions like .zprj, I think, um, but I'll have you embed the JPEG. So the, once an image is embedded, the whole class can scroll through them, see them really easy, but I might need to grade something on a deeper level, so I might have to have you attach the project file and then I would have to download it and open it to go in and grade you. So just look out for both of that. Make sure you understand, oh, I know how to save the project file versus just saving a screenshot or a snapshot, which is a JPEG file. That's really important as well. Um, okay, I'm gonna get out of my render view just so my computer goes a little bit faster. 
Um, the next thing is make sure you notice, see down here we have different views. I actually have it currently set on the split screen so I can see my 2D pattern as well as my 3D. You can just click on 3D if you only wanna see 3D or just 2D or do the split screen. Okay. Um, another thing I want to bring to your attention is I'll use the word toggle menu. Um, so this is a set of tools that when you hover over them, um, like other tools kind of pop out, you kind of toggle over it. There's a set in the 3D window and there's also a set in the 2D. That's different. These are ones over here, just kind of stationary tools that are always there. This is what I mean by toggle menu. Um, and really it's it's mostly about views, I would say. So I'm, I'm right now I'm on the fabric view. Um, you'll probably want your fabric you know, on one of these two views with the blue and white fabric, but it does have other views as well. If you just wanna see it in solid white, if you need it transparent for whatever reason. Sometimes it's nice to have the random color so it really lets you see what pattern pieces are sewn together. Um, so this is just a view setting. It doesn't change your actual design. Um, same with here, like maybe you want to see your internal lines, maybe you don't want to have your internal lines on your avatar showing visually. These are just like really view settings. So um, so just play around with the toggle menu, familiarize yourself with that. Um, let's see here, okay. Another thing with the tools that I really want you to get used to with Clo is that they'll have a tool, right? Like this one here, It's if I hover over it, it says it's select mesh, it's a brush. Um, but it also has a little arrow in the bottom corner. And if it has a little arrow in the bottom corner, that means you can click and hold down and you can actually change it out to something else. So it has select mesh, brush, box, lasso, pin, box, pin, lasso. So it's actually five tools like kind of shuffled and hidden in this one thing. So that anytime you see a little bottom arrow, click and hold your mouse and you'll see, oh, there's actually more tools to choose from. Um, another thing to kind of know is these white arrows as well. That means um, it has the ability to edit something you already drew. So if you already have some mesh selected, but you want to change it, um, the white arrow means you can go in and change it. So like, for example, on the other side, we have three sewing tools here. They do have the little white arrows at the bottom, so I can choose different types of sewing, um, but it doesn't have the white arrow. So once I applied my sewing, it's there. Um, if I wanna change something, I actually have to click the sewing tool with the little white arrow, and then that allows me access to like go in, delete, or move, or change something. So that's super common in Clo. Another really common thing with Clo that is just part of like the learning hump is um, it has so many tools, right? It has all these tools. I just kind of explained the arrows. But also, if you're ever looking for a tool or you just wanna do something, you can't figure it out, I always tell students, when in doubt, right click. So I just right clicked right now, actually, I'm gonna try that again. Um, there it goes. And more tools pop up. So again, look, to front view, that keyboard shortcut number two, right? That'll send you there. So um, now I get one menu when I hover over the avatar, but I get a different menu usually when I hover over the background. So like same with the 2D window, different menu when I'm in the 2D window on the background versus hovering over an object. I'm gonna switch to the selection tool. Um, you get a different menu when you have an object selected, you're hovering over the object versus hovering over the background, you'll get a different message. So just be aware of where your mouse is when you right click, um, but that's a great way to pull up tools really quick as well. Okay, two more, three more keyboard shortcuts. I need you guys to memorize day one, and that is the selection tool that I just went to. Um, they actually call it the transform pattern tool. Um, it's the letter A, so click the letter A. I can't help it, I do call it the selection tool because when you're in it, you can select a pattern. As you can see, this pattern's selected, it's now yellow. It's also highlighted on the 3D avatar as well. Z will select just part of it. And what I like about the letter Z is that it's right underneath the letter A. Letter Z is also, it's a, edit pattern tool. Again, to me, it's a selection tool because when you click it, it'll, it'll select just what you click. So instead of selecting the whole pattern, it only just selected the top waist. So if I needed to make a change, like if I right click and I wanted to change the length of it, I could, whoops, I actually right click the background. Okay, I'll have to 
there we go, change length is an option. It would change length of just the line that's selected, not the whole entire pattern. Um, okay, those are all real good keyboard shortcuts to know. And the last one is spacebar. Um, what spacebar does, it will add gravity. So let's see if I still have my little, okay, let's say I have a little piece of fabric. Um, I'm just gonna, oopsies, let me, oops, oh dear. Okay, uh, let me grab a rectangle. Okay, I'm just gonna draft a little piece of fabric. And there it goes, it's moving to the 3D window. I'll switch to my selection tool by hitting the letter A to make sure it's selected so we can see it. There it is, here we go. So this piece of fabric, um, it's not sewn to anything. It's just floating in the air because it's in this unsimulated state. Once I simulate um, the 3D window, gravity will be added. So this piece of fabric is going to fall to the ground. Uh, when we are designing, we do not work when it's simulated usually. Also simulation mode, it does slow your computer down. So it's usually better to work when it's not simulated. So right now it's not simulated because I see this arrow here. Now what I have learned from my experience of teaching students is that sometimes on some computers, there can be a little delay by clicking the icon. So it's really better if you wanna simulate, hit spacebar. And once I hit spacebar, um, you can see the icon now is blue, it's been selected. And we had a selection like arrow tool, but now it's a hand. So if you need to like touch or grab anything, you can. Maybe I can even just try to save this guy, <laughs> move him up here. And then maybe if I wanna, like, I can move it. And then if I wanna freeze it, hit spacebar. And spacebar just turned off simula simulation mode. It's now white arrow and the tool's no longer a hand. So I really do not recommend clicking this. Um, for whatever reason, hitting spacebar just works so much better. Um, so that's also another trick I wanted to let you guys know about. Um, and one other thing that's really cool, especially if you're not super good at pattern drafting or if you don't have a ton of experience sewing, it's really easy to get lost in all these pattern pieces. Like, oh my gosh, what is the front? What is the back? Where is this sewn? Um, what I love about Clo is that if you're like, mm, I think I want to add like a pocket right here. Um, so you can click on it. And when I click on it, there's a blue dot. So one, the pattern piece got selected, and then there's a blue dot of where I click. So that can just help me visually really see where this spot is on the pattern piece. So if I wanted to then go add a pocket piece, it's, I can see that. So again, if you're like, I don't really know where this is, just click on the avatar and the blue dot pops up of where you're clicking. So that's super neat um, as well. One other thing that happened, I'm just gonna bring to your attention, it's selected, it's yellow, but this guy's blue. Um, this might be a little bit intermediate, but you can draft a pattern that has a symmetrical mirrored copy. So any changes I make to this one, if I made it shorter, its copy would also be shorter. So that's super handy um, as well. If you didn't wanna do that, you can remove linked editing, but then you know you just won't have a symmetrical pattern piece later. They'll just have two different ones, which sometimes that's great. Um, anyways, okay, so that is my quick, basic, to the point, make sure you have that stuff memorized, that checklist, and I think it'll really help you um, with your foundation and, and just learning all the other more intermediate things. All right, guys, looking forward to a great semester. If you guys have more tips you wanna share with each other, please go ahead and add them to the discussion board, and, um, and yeah.